China's fifth generation J-20 remains one of the world's most enigmatic and poorly understood modern combat aircraft. Even 11 years after its maiden flight, and some six years after entering initial service with the People's Liberation Army Air Force. Therefore, the strategic study is arguably the most definitive publicly available preliminary documentation for China's fifth-generation fighter project that will become the J-20. It provides a glimpse into late 1990s-era China's assessment of geopolitical trends, military technology, and future air warfare through the early 21st century, as well as an assessment of China's own aerospace industry and the performance and mission requirements for their fifth-generation aircraft, as considered at the time. China's fighter generation classification has been changed to international generation classification, for example, F-16, F-15, Mi-29, Su-27, J-10 translates as fourth generation instead of the Chinese equivalent of third generation, and F-22, F-35 in Chinese Future Fighter slash J-20 translates as fifth generation instead of the Chinese equivalent of fourth generation, etc. The advantages that fifth generation fighters enjoy over older fourth generation fighters in terms of stealth, firepower, maneuverability, information, and communications. The leading and decisive role of air power in modern warfare in terms of seizing air superiority enabling control of the seas and conducting electronic warfare are all clearly stated in a manner consistent with international understanding of the role of air power. Domestic development of the fifth generation fighter is envisioned as a way to enable the PLA Air Force to carry out offensive and defensive missions, as well as advance the domestic aviation industry. The development of fifth generation fighter aircraft is also expected to produce technology that can help further improve and iterate fourth generation fighter aircraft. The main mission of fifth generation fighter aircraft is clearly stated as air superiority to carry out long range dogfights. Other secondary missions include being able to conduct air to surface attacks, maritime strikes, and suppress enemy early warning and guidance and fire control systems, operate in informed combat missions, acting as an auxiliary airborne early warning aircraft to carry out electronic warfare missions, providing targeting information to friendly troops and provide overall leadership and protection for other aircraft or missions. China's fifth-generation fighter is clearly stated in several pieces of research to be able to compete with the US F-22 and has major advantages over the F-35. The two US aircraft are also described in great detail and are seen as a pacing threat, with the F-35 seen as possibly part of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Air Force inventory after 2015. Seasoned PLA observers will recognize the air superiority role described by the strategic studies for the fifth generation fighter, which is fully consistent with the long term rumors associated with the J 20 during the late 2000s, as well as subsequent official statements about the aircraft. Mission in recent years, in particular, the rumors surrounding the J 20's requirement to compete with the F 22 and to have some advantages over the F 35 were also well known and widely circulated in the late 2000s, but perhaps contradicted little-known foreign observers. The fifth generation aircraft described by the strategic studies remains one that is intended to compete symmetrically with and engage the then leading fifth generation types on its own merits. It is not described as an aircraft limited to intercepting slow moving force multipliers and exiting when engaged fifth generation fighters nor is it a dedicated striker primarily concerned with air-to-surface missions at the expense of the air-to-air -air role. The strategic study indicates that the aircraft will begin full development in 2006 to 2007, begin flight testing around 2013, and enter service in 2019 to 2020, with deliveries of the first six aircraft taking place. In 2020, meanwhile, the TWR-10 engines will begin pre-production deliveries around 2017, and start small batch deliveries in 2021. In retrospect, development and deliveries of the WS-15 have lagged behind these projections, while the overall J-20 aircraft using interim L-31 and WS-10 engines started development and production earlier than this projection. After starting flight tests in early 2011, starting deliveries of the first batch of six aircraft in 2016, and entering small batch deliveries around 2018, 
three to four years ahead of this projection. The initial unit cost of the fifth generation fighter is also included, described at 450 to 500 million renminbi, possibly at early 2000s exchange rates. Although the scale of production is not listed and may be the unit cost in early batch production. A 40 to 50 year life cycle is listed for the aircraft and engines, avionics and weapons systems are listed as potential future upgrade areas, but the airframe itself will be more limited given the inherent nature of the airframe for the fifth generation. Airplane The aerodynamic design and power generation of the aircraft will allow for a comfortable supercruise. While no supercruise benchmark requirements are listed, speeds of Mach 1.7 are described for illustration purposes. The aircraft's combat radius depicted in the area charts is over 1,000 km and under 2,000 km. The exact number cannot be determined due to the quality of the original photographs, but based on geography, it can be estimated as between 1,300 and 1,800 km. The study stated that a fifth-generation fighter operating from airfields on Chinese territory should be capable of operating in the capitals of other countries in the region without mid-air refueling, and should be capable of operating over the entire island of Japan with a single in-air refueling. The strategic study sheds light on some of the details of the project that would become the J-20. However, certain caveats need to be considered for the implications of studies on the J-20. Given this paper has no classification rating, and given it was produced from the late 1990s through the early 2000s, it's likely that the various requirements, technical domains, and risk assessments will evolve between then and when the J-20 starts getting full. Scale development in the mid to late 2000s. As such, the strategic review is certainly far from complete documentation of the current characteristics of the J-20.